Hello, it's Mr. Champlin here. I hope you guys are excited for some algebra today. So we're going to look at completing the square, and we're going to solve by using completing the square, and we're going to put the quadratic function into vertex form. All right, so first thing we want to do is we have f of x equals x squared minus 6x minus 16. We need to uh, solve for our roots, so we have to put it f of x equal to 0. So we're going to do x squared minus 6x minus 16 equals 0. So now we want to get to, we want to find a perfect trinomial and convert it into a perfect square. And by doing that, we want to move the constant over to the right side. So I'm going to have x squared minus 6x equals 16. I'm just adding 16 to each side, right? Well, when we're completing the square, we need to know what the b value is divided by 2 and square it. And when we do that, we're going to get negative 6 divided by 2 squared, which equals negative 3 squared, which equals positive 9. So what I'm now going to do is add in a 9 to each side. So I'm going to add a 9 in here, and I'm going to add a 9 to the right. Because whatever I do to the left side, I must do to the right side too. So now following through, this makes x squared or my x squared minus 6x plus 9 is my perfect square trinomial or trinomial so now i can convert it to a perfect square and making this x minus 3 squared equals combined like terms on the right side 25. all right well i am down to one x one variable that's amazing so all i have to do is an inverse operation to solve for each side and my inverse operation of a square because x minus 3 squared to get rid of that, I'm just going to do a square root. And by taking a square root from each side, I'm going to get now have x minus 3, because the inverse of the operation negate each other, equals plus or minus the square root of 25. Because it's plus or minus, because you can either have a positive times a positive equal 25, or you can have a negative times a negative still equal a positive 25. So you don't know officially which one is which. All right. Well, let's move on. All right, we're going to add 3 to each side, but I do notice something. The uh, 25 is a perfect square, so that means I can do x equals 3, because I'm adding 3 to each side, plus or minus 5. So we're almost done, because I got x equals 3 plus or minus 5, but in other words, that is saying x, x equals, sorry, x equals... 3 plus 5, which equals 8. And this one is saying x equals, it also equals 3 minus 5, which equals negative 2. So technically, x can equal 8 or x can equal negative 2. Yeah, factoring may be faster than completing the square algebraically. If you look over here, that is quick. However, when we get to roots that are irrational, right? Irrationals, you know, such as like decimals and square roots that are not possibly squared, like you can't uh, square, you know, like something like 17. This is where completing the square comes in super handy. So let's look at one that has a roots that are irrational. So looking at f of x equals x squared plus 10x plus 7, Let's set it up to say x squared plus 10x plus 7 equals 0. Let's move the constant over. So I have x squared plus 10x, sorry, there's supposed to be an x there, equals 7. I'm going to do my formula. So I have b divided by 2 squared. My b value is 10. So I'm going to do two divide, or 10 divided by 2 squared, which equals 5 squared, which equals 25. I'm going to add 25 into each side, right? Because whatever I do on the left side, I got to do on the right side. So I'm going to add 25 to each side. Oh my gosh, did anyone catch my mistake? This is supposed to be negative 7 because I was supposed to subtract 7 from each side. Uh, lucky catch. All right, so now we found our perfect trinomial, which is x squared plus 10x plus 25, which converts to our perfect square, which is x plus 5 squared, and then we're going to combine like terms on the right side, and we're going to get 18. All right, 
Perform the inverse operation, which is taking the square of each side. This makes my left side x plus 5 equals plus or minus the square root of 18. And 18 is irrational. I can't, uh, there's no two numbers that times itself equals 18. So let's keep on continuing. I'm going to uh, subtract 5 from each side. And now I have x equals negative 5 plus or minus the square root of 18. Well, what do we do? There's still two possible answers for x. And there's two ways you can uh, solve it. And the first way is really on what the directions ask. And this direction says, round your answers to the nearest 10. I'm just going to plug this into my T-Inspire calculator. And when I do, I'm going to, I plugged in negative 5 um, plus square root of 18. And I got negative 0 0.8. And I also did x equals negative 5 minus square root of 18. And I get a negative 9.2. Not too bad. The other way to do it is write your uh, radical in simplest form. So I'm going to write this as, well, first notice, that 18 is actually 9 times 2, which is, in other words, is 3 times square root of 2. So I could just simply write this as x equals negative 5 plus 3 times radical 2, or x equals negative 5 minus 3 radical 2. All right, I hope this video helped you out. I hope you guys have a wonderful day. Uh, thank you very much. Bye-bye.